A week ago, Apple very silently, only on its website, launched the 2020 27 inch iMac. After four days of extensive 4K editing, here is our objective review of the 2020 27 inch iMac. Let's get started with the design. This is the all-in-one design with a beautiful screen in front. It has been beautifully crafted. It still looks absolutely fabulous. There is great finishing quality all the way through. You can see the Apple stamp on it at every edge, at every corner. It's fantastically well built. Now, the design technically is from 2012, but to me, it still looks absolutely fabulous. I would keep it in my living room any day. Moving to the display, this is one of the best displays. It's a 5K Retina display with 14.7 million pixels. There are 1 billion colors. It also has a True Tone display, which makes a big difference depending on the environment that you're in. If you're in a dark room, it adjusts itself to the light surrounding you. Now, the next thing that I want to really discuss is this 27 inch screen. I for one had not imagined how amazing the screen is. This screen is all about real estate. It is 58% larger than the 21.5 inch, which makes a huge difference. Most people consider the 16 inch MacBook Pro to have a pretty large screen. This screen is nearly three times the area of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. At this high resolution, you don't need a second display next to you. This windows, I could work on iMovie, I could work on my PowerPoint, I could work on various things all throughout without even thinking about the second display. There is also that optional nano texture glass. So this display is a huge, huge, huge plus overall. It's, it's extremely high resolution, 5K display, 27 inch, really starts to show. I'm someone who's used to 24, so 27 came across as a nice, nice, nice surprise. And overall on display to me, it is a clear fire of five. Let's move to the processor. This is the 10th generation i5 processor. It has all of six cores. And to put this in context, this i5 10th generation is more powerful than the higher end i7 processor of the 8th generation. So it really does make a big difference and, and practically I could see that while editing movies in 4K it was an absolute breeze. This processor has lots and lots of power and this is just the base version without even upgrading to the higher end uh, processors. Let's move to the RAM. It comes with 8 GB of RAM. It is upgradable all the way to 128 GB. But the biggest attraction of the 27 inch iMac is are the upgradable slots behind. Users have access to it. You can upgrade it whenever you like. What I would suggest is the following. Save your money, order a comparable RAM from Amazon and it'll cost you 70% lesser. What is very important to note is that this slot to upgrade the RAM is not available on the 21.5 inch. It is only on the 27 inch. And for me personally, that was a very big reason why I went for 27 inch, uh, as it gives me greater flexibility for the years ahead. On the graphics card, it comes standard with Radon Pro 5300. It's a good enough gra graphics card. It performs reasonably well for most users. There are obviously options to upgrade if you're an advanced gaming user. The thing to note is that these, this graphics card is 40% better than the graphics card in the 2019 iMac, which itself is a big plus. And imagine if you are someone who's upgrading from three to four years ago, you will really feel the difference. 
Let's move to the FaceTime camera. Apple has updated the FaceTime camera here. It's now a 1080p HD camera. This is an important upgrade. During the COVID crisis, all of us are working from home and the Zoom calls have become a lot more popular and therefore having a good FaceTime camera does really make a difference. This iMac has fantastic speakers. This is the best speakers I have personally seen on any, any, any computer. It has good high volume, good bass and has clear vocals. So the, these speakers are comparable to the performance of HomePod. Let's get to the ports. If you look at all Apple products, they are deficient in ports. But that's not the case with iMac. It has everything that you would ever want it to have. It has Ethernet 1 gigabit with an option to upgrade to 10 if you really want to. There are four USB 3.0 ports. There are two Thunderbolt ports and you can actually attach two 6K displays to it. There's a high speed SDXC card reader slot. And then there's also a standard 3.5mm audio jack. Moving to connectivity, the Wi-Fi is a standard 802.11 AC. It has Bluetooth 5.0. Working on this iMac made me realize how important AirDrop is. It was so quick to transfer files from my iPhone 11 Pro to, uh, to this iMac. I could literally transfer 2GB files in a matter of seconds. There is a wireless keyboard and the mouse. This mouse is fully rechargeable. You don't have to ever change batteries. You can recharge it through the lightning port. I've been accessing all my Windows files through the cloud. I've been using OneDrive and iCloud and essentially all my files are accessible anyway. So now coming to what you don't get with iMac. There are essentially two things that you miss out at. Number one is portability. If portability is important to you, go for a laptop. But I would say think again. In this modern world, what you need is a powerhouse desktop. And for portability, you can use your phones and iPads or even a lightweight uh, a MacBook Air and so on and so forth. But don't, please don't compromise on the quality of your desktop. The second thing that you don't get is the new design and, and yes, if you want to wait for the new design, it may take a year or two before that happens. But those are the only two things that uh, the iMac misses out at. So overall, if you are considering a performance desktop, this is an absolute no-brainer to go for. And guess what? Apple has made it truly, truly, truly value for money. You know, one could easily give it 4.5 out of 5 on, on all the different performance metrics. If you were to get your MacBook Pro to the same configuration, it would cost you at least 40% more. So you save more than $1,000 in going for the, with this iMac. And guess what? Even after all those additions, MacBook Pro wouldn't have gotten you this stunning 5K 27-inch display. In relation, the 21.5-inch really looks outdated. In fact, I would say with the current configuration and pricing, don't go for the 21.5 inch. The other thing is don't go for Mac Mini. Now Mac Mini has sort of lost its relevance with iMac 27 inch being the real powerhouse. Let's get into what should be the right configuration. Now, if you are a pro user, by all means, you know, if you're a professional user, if you are someone who's into high-end games, by all means go for the highest end of iMac and if needed please go for the, the iMac Pro but for most users the base configuration here is more than sufficient now coming on to the choices to make number one keep to the standard 8 GB of RAM you can always upgrade it yourself and it will cost you much lesser number two SSD keep to the standard 256 or just upgrade to 512 there's no point in overpaying for terabytes of internal storage. This is a desktop eventually, and, and you can simply attach a high performance SSD. Number three, gigabit ethernet. That's the standard. There's also an upgrade option for the 10 gigabit. I think for most users, gigabit ethernet is really much more than sufficient for the years to come. Number four, the standard model comes with the smaller keyboard. What I would suggest is upgrading to the keyboard which has the numeric keypad as well, just as this one here. 
And now finally coming to the biggest thing, the $500 nano textured glass. Well, it's a big question. For me, the answer was a clear no. So yeah, so that's the recommended configuration. Just, just a quick recap. Keep to the base model or the next one, which is 512 GB. Keep to the standard 8 GB RAM. Please don't bother spending more on, on RAM. Uh, SSD, keep to 256 or 512. Keep to the one gigabit ethernet. And I guess one place where I would recommend upgrading is the keyboard, uh, which costs you all of 35 US dollars only. So what do you think about the latest 27 inch iMac? Let us know what has been your thought process. And if you have any questions or queries, please feel free to comment and we'll be happy to get back to you with our view. For more such unbiased reviews and for the latest in tech and travel, subscribe to our channel and follow us on tech and travel.